My name is Jonathan, Jonathan Trapp, and I'm going to talk about a dream that I think you had when you were a little girl, when you were a little boy. Do you remember, hold, and I don't mean this as a rhetorical technique, I mean, do you have this memory of holding on to an individual toy balloon and thinking, if I can just get enough of these, <laughs> can I float away? And it's something that exists across generations, this fantasy form of flight. And unless your parents were exceptional, they told you that it was impossible. So I started with one balloon, my backyard. I said, this has got to scale. If one balloon gives some unit of lift, can we just get enough of these to float away? Just like that childhood dream, the dream form of flight. I'm a technical projects manager at Accenture, big IT consulting firm, and I'm responsible for execution and delivery, much more so than, than dreaming, frankly. But I'm sitting in my, in my office, and I'm thinking, after having done that experiment with one balloon, could we really do this? You know, this, this idea that we had, so many of us had as a child. Could we hold on, could I hold on to toy balloons and, and float away? And I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna have muscle failure. That's not, that's not gonna work. We need something to do this in. And I'm in my office and I said, we could do it in, in this, in this chair that I'm sitting in right now, Steelcase Uno. Could we cause it to fly? The um, Steelcase Uno. So we tried that, that didn't work, but we had backups, we had additional cells, added additional cells, made a small cluster, and caused just that gondola to float. If you were in my office building that day and looked out the fifth floor window, <laughs> that's, what, that's what you would have seen. Took about a year to get to this point on the airfield where we're rigging that chair, steel case uno, and hours through the night inflating these balloons when the winds are calm in the night, all night long. My girlfriend reads me a gas balloon checklist. She has my full attention. She argues this was the last time she had my full attention. <laughs> Read me a gas balloon checklist, honey, I'll, it'll work. And I am positively buoyant here, um, literally positively buoyant. and. Um, emotionally, positively buoyant to be off the ground, three feet there, 10, 20, 35 feet. I turn around and I say to my crew, see you on the other side, <laughs> which wasn't the best thing to have said. It had a tone of finality to it that wasn't implied. See you in an hour. This would be good. See you on the other side. Not so much. I didn't use that one again. Floated away up 50, 100, 150 feet in this instance, into the sunrise. My friend on the far right of that photo turned to my girlfriend in the center just after this was taken and said, well, we'll get him back. <laughs> I can show you one of the happiest moments of my life. And it's right there on the airfield. As my friend is checking the carabiner to make sure it's locked, the crew that was there all night long inflating those balloons looks on, and my girlfriend tells me to come back to her is this about flying an office chair? Uh, it's not. It's about dreams and inspiration and accomplishing what we set out to do, whatever that is. In this instance, 15,000 feet over North Carolina. So we approached the FAA and argued that we should be able to certificate this as an aircraft. And after about a year, what they came back with was, they said, well, the best we can figure out, it was a failure of the imagination when we wrote the regulations. Because there's nothing that should stop you from flying, as I demonstrate, having flown it multiple times under a certain part of the rules. So we got it registered as an aircraft, November 878 Uniform Papa. You can look it up in the, the FAA website. That registration and that magic little pink piece of paper, a special airworthiness certificate, experimental man-free balloon. Model CF flying chair. <laughs> But to fly the English Channel, we had to approach the uh, Civil Aviation Authority in the UK and France. And we said, um, we'd like to do this. Here's our documents. They said, your pilot license is fine. Your airworthiness certificate is sub ICAO. You cannot fly on the airworthiness certificate. You would need a special exemption to even get off the ground. You need an exemption to fly here whatsoever. And I said, can I have an exemption? And they said, OK. And they issued me the exemption. <laughs> and that's it right there. I love this. Air navigation order. Jonathan Trapp's flying chair. <laughs> And then there's these guys. Um, I made the assertion, we could do this. I made this assertion. What if we took hundreds of these cells in the desert of Southern California? 
hundreds of these balloons inflated by more than about 100 people all night long, 14 hours, and attach it to that tiny little house there? Could we cause it to fly in manned flight? Um, if you look out through the chimney, up at the balloons, this is what you would see, layer after layer after layer of toy helium balloons and that airworthiness certificate that the FAA gave us. Um, it is experimental, and it's required to have that word on the aircraft next to the mailbox. And we are off the ground here. What is this? 10, 10 feet, 10 feet as I'm, as I'm waving goodbye. Um, and then we float away 10,500 feet. Yeah, that one's neat. We want realistic challenges. I <laughs> think it's funny to have said that after I just showed you we flew a house. Uh, realistic challenges. Somebody said, well, why don't you fly the Alps? <laughs> my answer was, Has you, have you seen the Alps? <laughs> that was my answer. We want realistic challenges. So I went to the Alps. Hmm. Southeast corner of France in Gap Tallard, that little place there trying to get over the largest mountain range in Europe um, into this soft pocket of, of, of Italy. Launching uh, from this tiny airfield, you see the rolling hills there and the foothills. These balloons, by the way, not ones like it, but these balloons are out in the courtyard. I would encourage you to go grab onto one and feel the lift. There's three sizes, so pull on the different ones that are out there. And um, these balloons are out there. Launching in this instance at night under the full moon. You see the control tower in the back left. So we float up, 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 and into the night. A 12-hour flight um, across the Alps and into to Italy. We have a DVD segment. Hello, Zeitgeist Minds. I told you I would try and explain a little of what it feels like to fly this system, and now is a perfect time to do it. Um, I am high in the sky, dropping down through 13,500 feet, down from 15,000 as I crossed the Alps. Yesterday I departed in France, um, crossed the Alps over the night, the, the French Alps to the Italian Alps. It was bitter cold and 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning I was asking if it was worth it. And when the sunrise came this morning, it was instantly apparent that it was worth every moment. Um, you can see what we're flying is the balloon system I've been telling you about, uh, November 87 Uniform Papa, that gas cluster. And this is what it's like. Listen, there's no sound, there's no rotor, there's no prop, there's no jet. There's nothing between me and the sky. 